Welcome back to Studio 5. When we boil down our day-to-day -day regrets, the list can be long. You might regret not being able to spend quality time with your spouse. You might regret that you're not handling your children well, that you forgot your friend's birthday, that you didn't handle that last conversation very smoothly. These are small things that can really weigh on you. So how can you end and resolve regret on a daily basis? Studio 5 relationship contributor Dr. Matt Townsend has a few suggestions. Just the word regret yeah. feels really heavy yeah, to yeah. me. It's like guilt. Yes. You know what I mean? It's this idea that we just can't, it's something from the past. And humans are the only animals that can't get over the past. We're willing to keep something alive even though there's no way we can bring it back. Why do we do this? It's human development. We've got a definition. Here's the definition of regret, okay? okay. Very simple. It's to feel sad, repentant, or disappointed over something that has happened or been done, especially a lost or missed opportunity. Now, disappointed is kind of a new word, that you uh -huh. let yourself down maybe uh -huh. in that particular You let yourself situation. down. So usually what humans are doing subconsciously, we're always trying to make sure we don't get killed or eaten yeah, by an animal. That's important. And we want to make sure we take advantage of every opportunity. So our emotions usually are there to make sure we're not harmed and we never miss opportunities. And as humans, we never like to let go of an opportunity we've missed. So we just keep repatterning this feeling of regret. But feeling of regret means we need to heal it, not just feel it. Okay, so today we're going to teach you, you got to heal the regret, not just keep feeling it. The feeling is going to keep going there to make sure you never miss an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So then instead, let's learn and let's actually heal so we no longer have to keep feeling it. Because that. feeling it over and over, is that part of the process of mm -hmm. healing or is that just beating ourselves up unnecessarily? That's just human nature. Your body and brain are just going to keep that thought going until you change. So it's teaching you to do something different. If you keep having the same regrets and you don't change it, let's just say the regret is your neighbor passed away and you have felt for months that you should go visit your neighbor. Uh -huh. You have felt you should go visit, you should go visit, you should go visit. And you, then the person passes away, you're going to have regret. And you might just say, and you'll make up a story about your time. I didn't have time to go do it. Yeah. But the reality is you still didn't go do what you were being prompted to do. Right. So your body's always going to feel a regret until you learn to start paying attention to those other feelings. So we heal, so we're gonna heal. we don't just feel. What we else? Heal, don't just feel. Second is we're going to extract the lessons that regret is teaching you. Regret's there to teach you something. So when you all of a sudden are feeling regret, don't just feel it. Start noticing what is it behind this feeling? What's going on? What is the lesson I'm trying to be taught here? The lesson with the, if your neighbor had passed away and you didn't pay attention, mm -hmm. the lesson might simply be you need to just pay attention. You need to focus on your little promptings. You need to maybe be more attentive to other people over schedules. You need to start to, um, I guess, care more about what's happening in the moment instead yeah. of what needs to be done in the day. Does that make sense? For the Those mom, are all lessons. Another scenario for the mom maybe who spent what feels like the whole week on her iPhone playing mm -hmm. on Instagram and Facebook and then realized a whole week had gone past without that engagement, engagement. with her children. So then we regret it and we should have spent more time and got yeah. our children more ready for whatever. So then there's a lesson to be learned then. And it's not just you got to get rid of your phone. There's a deeper lesson that's probably connected. By the way, these deeper lessons are usually embarrassing. So when you get deeper into the thought of what is my lesson here, it's usually an embarrassing thing you don't want to tell everybody, which gets us to our next part of healing. Okay. Then you need to adjust your story. If your story was just, well, you know, it was a crazy week. A crazy week is different than I'm flat out addicted to my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so out of control. <laughs> That's a different story than I was busy. Or, um, you know, I had a lot going on. That's why I didn't talk to the neighbor or worry about the neighbor. Yeah. Or I'm not the only one in the neighborhood that can worry about the neighbor. These are all stories we tell. So what I want us to do is once you start to notice what lesson you're supposed to be learning from the regret, adjust your story. And I want you to tell the whole story. And I want you to tell even the shameful story. So I want you to tell everybody, you know what? I have felt so much regret this week because I spent a lot of time on my phone. In fact, I'm addicted probably to my phone and I neglected my kids now, more than I should Now, why do we have to tell people and not just admit it to ourselves and resolve it in our own little private well, corner? Because one of the reasons is the minute you let the shame go, it no longer has hold on you. So part of what regret does is it creates a shame. It creates more than guilt that you're just, you should have changed something. Shame is more that you're a bad person. So regret is a, is a shaming device that keeps you shamed. And as long as you have a shame, you're usually going to keep it private uh -huh. and personal with secrets and self-judgment. So we like to shame ourselves privately. The minute you tell the story outward that you blew it and exactly how you blew it, the shame tends to go away. And then actually it's out there. So it's almost a personal release. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're almost breaking your own. Most of us won't admit we have an addiction to our cell phones. 
So the minute we actually start to admit we have an addiction to ourselves, out loud to other people, out loud to other people, and tie it to our regret for not having paid better attention to my kids this week, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to have to deal with it now. The real story makes it so you can't, you have to start questioning your thinking. Mm -hmm. What a thought does eventually is we make it into a story and then we just keep that story alive. Everyone out there talks about how much time they don't have in this world. Word, we don't have enough time. That's just a story. And as long as we keep telling that story, we none of us have to look at the fact that a lot of us are spending time where we shouldn't be spending it. So we said before the commercial break, we set it up by saying regret is, is inevitable. We're all going to We're all going to have so it. So this cycle that you've taught us to acknowledge it, to change the story, that probably has to continue to yeah, happen regularly. That's right. Well, and part of it is, again, if you would just change the story, it's going to force you to change your game. So then one of the things we want you to have to do now is look for lasting change. The regret is not there, and it's actually useless to keep feeling regret if you're not going to change. Regret's just going to keep happening. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of wasted energy and emotion. But if you want to change because of the energy and emotion, you can start making plans. You can start asking family members to help you put your phone away. You can start making rules. So we're going to have time when we're technology free and I'm going to be family focused. You can start changing stuff. And I guarantee you, as you increase the changes, you're going to decrease the shame and the, and the regret. It's a, it's a cycle, right? But you have to do something. And words like shame, regret, guilt, disappointment, if we hang on to those and we don't follow mm -hmm. these four steps, what are the, what's the effect of More that? of the same. More of the More same. of the same. More of the same. And this delusion that we're actually progressing a lot, but we're really not. We're just getting better and better at telling our stories. But see, our emotions, that's why we're so depressed as a population. That's why we're so anxious as a population. That's why we can't focus. We've got all of these things that we have going on inside of us, but we tend to be more fake on the outside, let's just start being more real and let's heal. Instead of just feeling our pains, let's start healing them. I love it, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank Four you. steps to getting rid of regret permanently. Boom. Take your turn now. Seats are filling up for your date night. Yes, you got to come. November 15th. You're going to be there. I am going to be In there. In fact, Mark says he can hardly wait. Mark is so excited. <laughs> 7 p.m., Olympus Junior High. This is going to be fun because we're going to teach you how to deal with some people. You've never met any. But some people just don't get how to relate to others. I've <laughs> never met anyone like and that. And we're going to teach you how to deal and create peace with highly ineffective people. Some of them are family, friends, neighbors. Some of them are your bosses. Some of them you married. And I joke that Mark's, I mean, sarcastically Mark is excited. always excited. He, no, he really is. I think you have he a is. great way of bridging those gender gaps, yeah, yeah. right? Women love the relationship advice. Men love your humor. We so laugh, you come together. we cry. And uh, Mark always comes back and I give him M&M's, M &M, remember? That's I, right. I hook him up. Yeah. It's their little bond, M&M. Datenightswithmatt.com. That's awesome. where you get the tickets. Matt, thank you so Thanks, much. Brooke. Coming up next.